We begin in London, where lawyers for the Crown say the case for terrorism is overwhelming against convicted mass murderer Nathaniel Veltman. He was found guilty in November of running down and killing four members of a family simply because they were Muslim. The sentencing phase of Veltman's trial continued today, as the judge must now decide if what he did constitutes terrorism under the law. Matt Ingram was in court today and joins us now live with the very latest. Matt. Taz, the day ended with Veltman himself reading a statement to the court, apologizing to the family, saying that he can't turn back time, and once again referencing some mental health disorders as a reason for why he did what he did. But that apology, it was not accepted at all by the family who came out just a short time ago, right here where I am, to read a statement to the media. Take a listen to what they had to say. It would be a failure for anyone to believe that this was an apology. It was one more strategy in a series of ploys that has not stopped for two and a half years. It comes from a convicted killer who has had ample opportunity to confess. If he tr truly was sorry, we would never have been here for this needless trial. Video evidence of the attack, video confession in jail, a written manifesto and a chart of pedestrian fatality and driving speeds on his coffee table. This was an unnecessary re-victimization of our family. This was day three of the sentencing phase of the trial after Veltman was found guilty of four counts of first degree murder and one count of attempted murder at his trial back in November. It was a day to hear from the lawyers who laid out their arguments as to whether this was terrorism or not, beginning with the Crown, the Crown who told a packed courtroom why she thinks this was indeed an act of terrorism. Calling it a planned and deliberate terrorist attack, Crown attorney Sarah Sheikh told the court, there should be no doubt about the offender's intent to terrorize Muslims. All of the victims are scared when they see a black truck. All of them are afraid to cross the street. Sheikh saying the June 6, 2021 attack that killed four members of the Afzal family and seriously injured a fifth meets the legal definition of terrorism because it was ideologically motivated and was intended to instill fear and intimidate Muslims. Sheikh rejecting the defense's assertions that Veltman wasn't ideologically motivated, but instead killed the Afzals due to mental health disorders. All of these assertions have no footing in reality. The defense strains credulity. 15-year-old Yumna Afzal, her parents, 44-year-old Madia Salman and 46-year-old Salman Afzal, and 74-year-old grandmother Talit Afzal were killed, and her younger brother was injured when the family was struck. After he was arrested, Veltman confessed to police, saying he was a white supremacist and that he killed the Afzals to inspire others to commit similar acts of hatred against Muslims. The Crown says the act itself, Veltman's statements and confessions after his arrest, and his manifesto, a white awakening, which is filled with racist ideologies, all overwhelmingly prove this was terrorism. I beg to differ. Defense attorney Christopher Hicks took a much different view arguing it wasn't terrorism because Veltman's manifesto were just ideas written to himself and they don't rise to an ideology. Hicks conceding the attack was planned and deliberate but says it wasn't terrorism, arguing Veltman didn't intend to instill fear. The issue of terrorism has not been litigated in Canadian law, so that's why I'm determined to uh, uh, oppose it because I don't think this is a terrorist act at all. The defense defending the idea that mental health problems and a traumatic childhood explain what Veltman did. Also discussed was a sentence for the attempted murder charge on the young boy. The Crown's asking for 25 years to life while the defense is asking for 10 years. Now, Veltman's already facing 25 years to life. That's a mandatory sentence for the four counts of first degree murder. So no matter what's decided on the attempted murder charge, or what's decided on the terrorism charge, it's not going to affect how long he stays behind bars. However, if he is found that this, if it is found that this was a terrorist act, it could affect his parole far in the future. Court's set to resume on February 22nd here, when we're going to find out from the judge what she thinks 